Hey everybody, this is Fearless Barney Fife, and this is on match pair T procedures. I tried to do this earlier, but the volume was down, so it was a little bit later than I expected today. Sorry about that. Uh, so here we go. In a match pair design, subjects are matched in pairs, and each treatment is given to one, uh, to one subject in each pair. So to compare the responses to the two treatments in a match pair design, we apply a one sample T procedure. We'll explain why it's a T procedure in just a minute. I'm sure you guys already know. Uh, to the observed differences, okay, we're going to do the differences. If we weren't doing the differences, it would be a two sample T procedure, but we're going to just, uh, we're going to subtract them, so we're going to just be dealing with one number. The parameter, which is uh, the population mean in a matched pair, pairs T procedure is the mean difference in the response to the two treatments with, within the matched pairs of subjects in that entire population. All right, I have an example here. So can uh, sense produce sense? Uh, this is example 11.4 on page 629. Okay, so we hear that listening to Mozart improves students' performance on tests. Perhaps uh, 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 pleasant odors have a similar effect. So to test this idea, 21 subjects uh, worked on a paper and pencil maze while wearing a mask. Okay, notice it doesn't say anything about a SRS right there. That's important. Okay, so uh, the mask was either unscented or carried a floral scent. The response variable is their average time on the three trials. Each subject works the maze with both masks in random order. The randomization is important because subjects tend to improve their times as they work uh, on a maze repeatedly. All right, so what they did, you guys, is they, they took uh, this maze test six times total, three times with the unscented mask and three times with the scented mask. And they took the average of the unscented and the average of the of the scented. Okay, so here's a table right here, and it's over here on the next page right here. So uh, this 30.60 is the average of three scores right there, of three uh, scores on the maze. All right, uh, and then uh, so the scented one right here, and so this difference right here is this 30.60 minus 37.97, and you get this negative number right here. And they want to see if the scented ones actually made it a faster time. So you can see that this is actually a slower time right here. In fact, it's seven minutes slower. So they want to know the positives. They want to, uh, they, they want us to uh, test to see if it makes them go faster. So these numbers should be smaller. Okay, so when you subtract, you should get a positive over here. So like right here, this one right here. When you subtracted those, yeah, the scented mask did that person did go faster with the scented mask. So to analyze these data, you subtract the scent times, and so they appear in the difference column. Okay, and the first subject, for example, was 7.3 seconds slower. Okay, so uh, because the shorter times represent better performances, positive differences show that the subject did better when wearing a scented mask. Now, if I had time in class, I would have us list all of the unscented in list one all of the scented in list two, and then list three, we define it as list one minus list two, and it would all of a sudden these would pop up in list three. And then we do all our statistics off of list three, but we don't have time right now. So step one, identify the population of interest and the parameter you want to draw a conclusion about and state the null and alternative hypotheses and words and symbols. Okay, so uh, remember, uh, the null hypothesis is always no change. And so we wanted to know, um, uh, is it going to be a positive difference? Um, uh, so did it, it, did it improve the score? So that's why it's greater than zero right here. All right, so that's what they're asking. Did the scented masks improve the scores, which means they were shorter times. So when you subtracted them, you get a positive. So here, the, the population mean is the mean difference in the population from which the subjects were drawn. The null hypothesis says there's no improvements, and the alternative says uh, uh, the unscented times are longer than the scented times on average. Okay, so uh, choose the appropriate inference procedure and verify the conditions for using that. Well, since we don't know the standard deviation, then we are going to perform a one-sample t-test. All right, so next, check the requirements. Okay, the data come, uh, is, is, comes from a randomized matched pair experiment, but we're generalize the results of the study to the population of interest only if we view our 21 subjects as an SRS of the population. And we don't know. They didn't tell us it was an SRS. You need to state that. Okay, so what do you do then? Then you draw a stem plot. Okay, and a stem plot, you just want to kind of scope it out and see if, uh, um, uh, if you 
uh, if it's a bell-shaped one and if it looks normal, you guys. And this is reasonably bell-shaped right here. So we don't. So right here it says we have no reason to question the normality of the population of the differences because it looks pretty good. So if the conditions are met, we're going to carry out the inference procedure. Okay. So um, if we did a one-sample um, uh, t-test or one-sample statistics, uh, we get uh, the sample mean to be uh, 0.95. Uh, 6, 7, and the sample standard deviation to be 12.5497, okay? So, uh, there's the formula right there, and you plug them in, and uh, remember the mu is 0, and uh, divided by the standard deviation over the square root of 21, and you get that as a t-score. Okay, then we go to table C in the back of your book, and you find the p-value for t sub 20. Now remember, there's 21 uh, people, so it's always n minus one is our degrees of freedom, so that's why we're doing a uh, 20 right there. So if you go across that, go down the column where it says t sub 20, and then go across the row right there and find the one that's uh, you can find the t value that's closest to 0.349, and then table C shows that 0.349. Let's see, let me see. I think I have it right here. Yeah, right here. So if you go down to uh, right across that uh, df equals 20 right here, so here's df equals 20. And you get, and they keep growing. The next number is even bigger, and it goes bigger, bigger, bigger. So we're looking for 0.349 because that's our T star right there. So 0.349 is somewhere over here to the left. And if you notice, the probabilities are way up on the top of that uh, table C. And so they're getting bigger as you go to the left. So it's going to be greater than 25 percent. Okay, so the p value is therefore greater than 25 percent. And so to do it on the calculator, you guys. Here's how you do it on the calculator. You go uh, go into stats, scroll over to test at the top, go down to number two, a t-test, and since the data is in our calculator, then we press data, and if you had the, those differences in list one, or in our case, we're going to do it in list three, and uh, we're looking for greater than. There's three choices, not equal to, less than, or, or greater than. So we chose greater than. It's our null hypothesis. And then hit calculate, and it'll give you this uh, 0.36522, which is this right here. Okay, so now we get to interpret the results. All right, so um, the data uh, does not support the claim that the floral sense improves performance. The average improvement is small, but uh, is 0.96 seconds over the 50 seconds uh, that the average subject took when wearing the unscented mask. This is small improvement, and it's not statistically significant at even at the 25% level. It's at the 36% level. Okay, so we cannot reject our null hypotheses. Okay, one more. Do you depend on caffeine? All right, see example 11.5. Our subjects are 11 people diagnosed as being uh, dependent on caffeine. Each subject is barred from coffee, colas, and other substances that contain caffeine. Instead, they took a capsule that contained uh, their normal caffeine intake. And during the different uh, time periods, they took a placebo capsule. Uh, in order in which the subjects took the caffeine from the placebo randomized, what they did is they did a test and said if there was a difference. I'm just going to jump to this right here. All right, so this test right here, um, they, and we're only interested in these first two columns. I don't know why they did these ones right here because we're not even going to deal with those. So let's just focus on these first two columns. And what they did is they, they pressed a button and they found out um, uh, people that pressed a button, they can get uh, 5 uh, per minute and, they, uh, and then 16 per minute. Or, um, and then so what you're going to do is, and, and it was a depression score, you guys, they, they're talking about if they're depressed or not. So, so this person seemed to be uh, more depressed with this high score of 16 as compared to when he had a score of 5. All right, so what we're going to do is we're interested in their differences, you guys, and we're going to construct a 90% interval for the mean change of the depression scores. So we're going to subtract these depression scores right here. All right, so I'm going to make another column. So this is going to be placebo minus uh, the caffeine. So here it's going to be placebo is 16, caffeine is 5. 16 minus 5 is still 11. My kids thought it was 9 this morning. And then 23 minus 5 is 18. And then there's all the rest of them. We're interested in those blue numbers there, and we're going to construct a 90% confidence interval. Okay, so step one, identify the population of interest and the parameters we want to draw a conclusion about. So it's the interest of all people who are dependent on coffee. We want to estimate their mean difference of the placebo minus the caffeine and the depression score that would be reported if all individuals in the population took the caffeine capsule and, and the placebo. Okay, so choose the appropriate procedure. We're going to do a one-sample T procedure because we do not know the standard deviation. 
uh, to construct a confidence interval for the mean difference since the population standard deviation of the differences of depression is unknown. Okay, if the standard deviation of the population is unknown, we do a t-test. Okay, so now we're going to check the requirements. Again, um, the data comes from an SRS of the population of interest. This is probably not the case, uh, so we may have some trouble generalizing the results. That is gold right there for your AP readers. Uh, so, um, uh, so what we're going to do is create a stem to, uh, plot, you guys. And this stem plot, although it's it's not perfectly bell-shaped curve, it's uh, there's no um, uh, there's no uh, obvious outliers or or nor uh, non normalities in the sample. So we're given no reason to doubt uh, that it is in fact a normal population of the differences. So we're going to go ahead and and proceed with caution, you guys. And so so here's our um, uh, our formula right there, we plug it all in and we get uh, this interval right here. This is my 90% interval right there. Okay, so uh, graphing calculator gets uh, this score. And, and you just go to stats, test, and then you scroll down to number 8 and do T interval, and it was a 90%. So you do 90% and then do calculate, and you should get that right there when you plug those numbers in. Alrighty, and then so we're going to interpret this results. So we are 90% confident that the actual mean difference in depression scores for the populations between 3.579 and 11.149 points. That is, we estimate the caffeine dependent individuals would score on the average between 3.6 and 11.1 points higher on the Beck depression inventory. So just state what you know and what's the word problem going on. And, uh, and this study provides evidence with uh, uh, that withholding caffeine from uh, caffeine dependent intervals, individuals may lead to a depression. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and give you the homework assignment right there.